Let's give her all the sauce. What's going on everybody? It is Bush Fishing. Today I have a super special video for you guys. So, in the last video I showed you guys my upgrade for the boat, but I only caught one walleye. And that's probably not going to be a video. So there's actually three upgrades. I'm going to start with the smallest one. Then I'm going to go medium and then I'm going to go huge and I'm looking at it right now. So, to start off I put a new prop on the trolling motor. I had no idea how small the other prop was and how beat up it was, but then Lorance Hook G2 Fish Finder. Now, I had one that worked and I'm going to keep it in the back of the boat, but this one, it's got the GPS in it and it's got all the lake maps on it. And then it's just normal depth finder that can hold the speed. Now, with my three and a half, you guys know the owner of JK Contractors, I'll put their information in the description, gave me that three and a half horse. It's an 08 Mercury and it was a good motor. It's worked perfect for me and I could get up to 10 miles an hour alone. But I mean, I was thinking, I probably need a little more power for some of those big lakes I've been going to. So the guy that I actually sold me this boat, super nice guy, had a 20 horse that he had on it. And I've talked to him, I said I would pick it up a while ago, but we never got to it. And then just this morning, I came after school to where he worked and he brought it with him. BAM! 20 horsepower Johnson. Woo! I mean... That is exactly what this boat needed and this isn't going to be a fishing video with me using it. This is going to be, I think what I have to do is pull off the carb, clean it, put some new gear lube in the lower unit, and then just make sure it runs 100% then the next video you guys are going to see. 30 miles an hour this thing can get this boat. So that's what I'm hoping for because you guys are going to see me just ripping. But for now, I think I'm going to figure out what I'm going to do in a second here, but I'm going to pull this around back so I can get it with the the headphones on just in case I need to run it but what this video is going to be is I'm going to pull off the carb clean it clean everything check everything and then put gear lube in the lower unit and let's just see if she runs and how she does so I'm gonna get this round back we'll see you guys in a second okay so I just had to take a minute because it's super hot but I couldn't find like there's no like where the water intake is so I figured it would be safer if I just ran it in a bucket so that's what I'm filling up now I got the gas line hooked up from my other boat and I'm just gonna pull it and see what happens. And based on that, I'll see where I'm gonna go. So stay tuned. Okay, things almost filled up. Let's get this cowling off. If I can figure out how. So, okay, cowling is off. Here's what she looks like. It looks pretty clean, but I'm just going to fix that. And I'm just going to hang on for dear life if it starts because chokes on. Let's see. Okay, it's trying to choke off. Are you kidding? Okay, so the test run was super good. Um, I think there's one problem though. I'm not sure if the water pump's just not working or what, or if I don't know where it is, but this thing was hot. So I'm gonna have to do a little research on that right now. I'm gonna go quick, look it up, see where it is. But other than that, this thing rips. I just need to figure out that water pump. So I'm gonna do that real quick and then I'll get back to you guys. Okay, so my first test was really good. The thing ripped. And then after that, I kind of started running it and it would start to sputter and then die. But it runs with the choke out and you can only start it with the choke out. So I think it's a fuel problem. That's pretty safe to say. What I'm worried about is whether or not the water pump works because this thing got hot and I didn't see water shooting out. But I'm also not sure where it comes out, if it does even. So what I think I'm going to do, I'm going to get the table over here, pull the carb off and soak that. And then once that's done, I'll pull it in and see what happens. And then if it still gets hot and stuff, I'll have to either check the water pump or replace it. But for now, I'm going to see, I'm just going to soak the carb just because it probably needed it. And then I'm going to try and work on the kill switch while I'm doing it. So I'm just going to pull the carb off. Okay, so I'm going to get the table set up and then I'll show you guys how to do that. So that's what it does. I got the table. See how it's smoking and this is like really hot. 
<laughs> so I'm just pretty much gonna assume the water pump is not working, but I'm gonna start with the carb. So I'm gonna take this out, which is the linkage for the, the air mixture. And there's one screw right here, which I'm gonna assume is gonna have to come off. I'm gonna see if I can get this linkage off without taking off the face plate. That screws out. That came off pretty easy. Now I'm gonna have to mess with this. Okay, so this screw down here is gonna have to come off. I don't know if you guys can see that, that's for the choke. Screw. And now this choke linkage is disconnected. So what else? This up here, pop that linkage out. That one's good to go. I think that's it for the front. This is for the, so this is low speed. So this cap's gonna have to come off. Just gonna see if I can pry this cap off. Yep, ah, here we go. Last screw and then the face plate should disconnect. So that's out and sure shit face plate is disconnected okay never mind i'm gonna take it off pull that out push that through okay face plates off and put these screws in right away so i don't forget where they go now let's pull the carb off shouldn't be too difficult i think all i have to do is take off these two bolts one half and it is definitely gonna have to take this linkage off that's not good Okay, just had to move the trailer. That's for the high-speed butterflies. This is gonna be a pain in the ass, unless I just hold it down like that. There we go. All right, almost there. Pretty simple compared to the 85 that I just did. <laughs> that ain't good. And bam, that is a disconnected carburetor. There we go. That's off. Let's disconnect this. Oh, was there gas in it? Yep, there was. High speed butterflies are working good. Let's see if there's some gas in here. Use the drainage. Let's see what was in here. Oh yeah, that probably isn't good. I'm gonna get yelled at. I'm gonna get a towel. There's four. Let's take it off. Let's see if this flow works. Holy crap. So the flow looks good, I guess. It's not sticking. So that's good. Yeah, flow looks good. This really just does not look bad at all. I'm gonna take some carb cleaner spray. I'm gonna spray everything, but for the most part, this looks really good. <laughs> holy crap that took a while so that point doesn't look sharp doesn't really seem like there's fuel in there so that might be a problem it does have the o-ring that stops it from shaking so that's good yeah i'm gonna get some carb cleaner spray spray all that and then soak it so basically from what i learned you find a hole you spray it Okay, blew all that carb cleaner and I'm gonna get some compressed air and just blow through the rest of the holes. Okay, so now everything's blown. I'm gonna go get my carb cleaner and then we're just gonna soak it. All right, so here we have it. Nice can of it. This thing's already soaked three carbs. Oh, it ain't good. So what we're gonna do, top half, Glug. float bowl Glug. and i don't think i'm gonna do these screws or any of this i might just give that a little dip but yeah that's pretty much it carbs off i'm gonna have to look for another screw that i lost in here but other than that there's nothing for me really to do until this thing soaks i might rebuild the fuel pump or just see what it looks like in there I was for sure getting gas through, but I really don't know what the problem is if it's not that. And I'm definitely going to have to check. Yeah, because that's still really hot. I'm going to have to check the water pump because I don't think that's even working at all. And to do that, I'm going to have to take off the lower unit, but I'm going to have to put gear lube in anyway. But yeah, this is my 20 horse. Big upgrade from the 3.5 if it works. 
Otherwise, you guys are going to see that three and a half a lot more. But hopefully you guys can see this so I can hit 30 miles an hour on this. So that's all I got for now. We'll see you guys either later in this video or in the next video. I'm not sure yet. But see ya. Alright, good morning everybody. It is day two of this, well the carb part of this. I've done a lot of research overnight and I think I know why it was just like doing that sputtering and stuff. Which I'll get to that in a second. But what I'm also worried about, what I think I screwed up on yesterday... I don't think I had the lower unit deep enough in the water to where the actual water intake is. And there, I can't really test now because it's like 8.30 in the morning. I don't know why I got up early and I have stuff to do. So that might be tonight. But for now, I'm going to put the car back together. And then what I'm going to do after this is I'm just going to drain my boats in the back there. And I don't feel like pulling it because I have to get the tractor. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the oil pan back there and drain the lower unit. And then just fill that up with gear lube. And then maybe I'll take off the actual whole lower unit and just test to see if the water pump is working. But for now, I'm gonna put this car back together. They say you're supposed to wear gloves, but you know, whatever. That's what I forgot to do. Okay, I'm gonna get newspaper. Okay, so earlier I actually called my grandpa seeing if I could borrow his motor stand and he has a huge tub and he just said yes. So I'm gonna quick put this car back together and then I'm gonna go pick that up. I bet those coasters could see through this. Just gonna let this drain for a little bit. Big mess. You're not supposed to touch it, I guess. Whatever. Those old guys will tell you about how strong these were back in the day, hey? Okay, so I'm going to open all that. Drain that. Okay, there's the top half. Nothing busted there. There we go. Float bowl. Honestly, the carb didn't look bad at all before I soaked it. And now it just looks mint. So I'm just going to let this dry for a little bit while I get everything ready. This should be pretty simple stuff. I'm just going to put it back together for now. And then once I get the motor stand, I'm going to put the motor on that. That's when I'm going to do the lower unit and all that stuff. But I got to stay on task. I got to put this car back together. Okay, here we go. I'm just going to put these. That's going to go back together. That's all good. Floats on. All right, let's just get these screws in lightly. Make sure everything lines up correctly. Yeah, it's all back together. I'm going to put this needle in. Now, this needle was super tight because there's that little bushing. So I'm going to see if it goes in the same way it came out. Yeah, I might have to take that bushing off. Okay, right now I'm going to go pick up that motor mountain barrel, and then I'll deal with that later. Okay, so I went to my grandparents' house, got the barrel, got the motor on it from the back, which was terrible. But now I'm going to put this carb on, and then I'm going to have to look at pictures for all the linkage, but that's not a big deal. One problem, I had this needle. I took the bushing out because you could not screw it, and then it didn't go in all the way. Not a huge deal. Found one of the nuts that I was missing. Put that right there. Pray to God I don't lose it. And let's get this carb on. Really simple. Only two studs. Nothing huge. Well, it should be simple. Okay, you just got to wiggle it a little bit. Now, don't put it in all the way because there's these right here that block the nut getting through. So, you just got to put it on and twist it a little bit okay that one's on now you got to go to the other side do the same thing this side's much harder because of this linkage okay okay now we just got to tighten them up i think they were both half i'm gonna go get that wrench quick tighten them up when it's working right now and has all the wrenches so this 15 millimeter will have to do <laughs> don't follow in my steps go find the half yeah, that one's on there tight. So now, I'm gonna have to look at pictures of all the linkage and see how that goes on. And then I'll get back to you guys when it's on. <laughs> okay, I got the side linkage and the choke linkage on. That wasn't terrible. Now I just gotta get the screw on, if it's even in the hole. Okay, those are all in there good. Pull it out, chokes on, push it in, chokes off. Oh, linkage works. That works for the high speed. Give her the high speed. The butterflies in the back for the high speed goes on. All that's good. All that's left is to put this linkage on. I have it turned out two and a quarter turns. That's what they say the basis is. I might have to adjust it. But for now, that's what I'm going to start at. So now all that's left is this knob. As you guys can see, it says rich lean. I'm going to put this knob on. Push it in. And it works good. And that that's full rebuilt carb. So I'm going to fill this tank up with gas. I mean, fuck. <laughs> I'm going to fill this tank up with water. The gas is hooked up. So I'm going to pump some in and see what happens. Oh, yeah. Nothing's leaking from there. And I can hear it. Problem with this motor, there's no kill switch. So I'm going to have to redo it. Looks like he redid the wires once. But what I'm going to do now 
So I'm gonna fill this with water because what I thought before happened, the actual water pump wasn't filled. I'm gonna run it, see what happens, and then I'm gonna flip this around and then I'm gonna drain the lower unit and fill it up with gear lube. Now I'm gonna fill that up with water. So basically why I want to do this is because yesterday I had it in a really small bucket and I think it actually wasn't over the water intake, but I'm not sure. I don't even know where it is because it looks all kinds of messed up on this. So I'm going to fill this one pretty much up to here and then we'll see what happens. Okay, so the water is just about thoroughly over where I think the intake is. So I'm going to let it fill up a little more and then I'm going to get her started. Got to make sure the primer bulb is facing pretty much vertical. It's not horizontal at all. That's a big problem. So I think we're about good on this. Let me turn off the water. Let's see what she does. I'm going to turn the choke on. Throttles all the way back. Let's see. Okay, the water pump works. All right, everybody, we're back. I spent like two hours helping my brother move and I feel a lot sicker now and it's kind of starting to rain, so I'm gonna do this quick. Basically what I'm gonna do is drain the lower unit, put new gear lube in it. And then while it rains and all that, I'm gonna kind of figure out. Okay, that came out easy actually. <laughs> And while I, this drains and it rains, I'm just going to spend my time figuring out how to fix the kill switch because that's kind of important. But for now, I'm going to take that screw out. The guy said, oh god. He said that he did drain it once. He was trying to fix something in here. So there's one screw there and one screw up here. Hopefully you guys can see that. You want to take both out so air can get through and it'll drain. Get that boy out. Now, a really important part of this, this motor stays in one spot, is that O-ring. And so the bottom one does not have an O-ring, and the top one does, so that's a problem. So I'm going to let this drain. My grandpa has O-rings, so I'm going to have to ask him. But yeah, this is going to drain, and I'm pretty much going to figure out what's wrong with the kill switch. So we'll see you guys once that's done. All right, everybody, I'm currently recording a different video. But I got the boat in the water, I got the motor on, and I'm about to show you guys this baby in action. I did take it out once already, so I know it does work. But let me put her in drive. All right, we're moving. So I'm gonna show you guys this thing working. With two people in the boat, I got up to 24 miles an hour. So I'm gonna see how fast I can get with one. I'm probably gonna get yelled at and probably kicked off the lake, which I don't want that to happen because this is a no wake thing, I think, right now. And it is a little windy, but let's see. So we're in drive right now. All right, this is basically the idle and drive. The water pump's working down there. It's got a really good idle. So we give her a little thought. All right, give her a little more sauce. Let's give her all the sauce. enjoyed this video make sure to leave a like comment subscribe i'm gonna get to fishing on the other video and we'll see you guys in a little bit eh all right what's going on everybody i recorded this outdoor once but the lighting was terrible so i came out to the garage because this is pretty much the best lighting i have and it's dark out and it's pouring right now so if you guys made it this far thank you so much i appreciate you and i'm gonna go over a couple things that i missed and just an overview of everything i did and some tips that i think will help you so basically two things that i missed is one putting the gear loop in the lower unit I use 70W90 or 80W90 and the one that I bought had a nozzle on it like it came with it so what you do is you put it in the bottom hole squeeze it and once it fills up it'll come out the top hole that's when you know you're done quick pull it out screw in the bottom screw put in the top screw top it off if you want that's pretty much it the other thing I figured out with the kill switch the problem was the actual button so I had to order another one but what I've been doing is just I left the wires out of the hole and then just touching them together because all you're doing is grounding it out so the motor dies but what I did was I pulled the carb off, cleaned it, soaked it, put it back in. I thought the water pump didn't work, but it was just because it wasn't underwater. I put new gear lube in the lower unit. And then another thing is with the idle pin. What I said is I turned it out two and a quarter turns. 
I guess for the actual motor, the specific setting was turn it out one and a half turns, let it run like that, and turn it in in one eighth increments until it gets like to that rough point. And then within that quarter turn out, you'll find the best idle. So that actually did it. I don't know what the specific problem was with it, but I know through all that the motor runs great now as you guys saw in the video. So you guys are going to be seeing that a bunch more. Another thing, if you guys have questions on motors and stuff, just ask in the comments and I'll do my best to help you. There's literally nothing that could hurt from me doing that. So if you guys do that, I'll try and help you. But hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. I've got a bunch more motor stuff coming soon and a bunch more fishing obviously i try to cover a lot of things in this channel so hopefully you guys enjoyed make sure to leave a like comment subscribe and i'll see you guys in the next one thank you